and you're going to pour it over the garlic cloves. But this is giving me a lot of excitement, a lot of thought on what else I want to can. Hello friends, welcome back. Today is a day full of many things. We have a lot on the list to do today. This morning we've already started some school and as if you don't know, we do homeschool. And I am getting ready here to actually make a bite to eat before we run an errand to a farmer's market. I have a few things I wanna look for there. We've got some projects here at home that we're going to work on this afternoon. And I'm just gonna take you along with me. It's gonna be a good day. We actually recently just got back from seeing my parents in Florida, which was such a good trip. We really had a great time, um, but they are getting ready for hurricane season and that's always a crazy time in Florida as fall approaches. Um, we think of fall as such a changing, peaceful time here in the North, but in Florida, it is very much a, <laughs> crazy time and an unexpected time, a time that they don't really know what all is going to happen. Um, so I'm recuperating a little bit. I have gotten a few groceries and things this past week, um, but I feel like my house is not totally recuperated. We are also diving into obviously the school year. So we've had some stuff going on um, with getting the school year started more permanently. We did start before we went to Florida as well, but now we're in more of a routine. That's the word I was looking for, routine. So, like I said, um, I'm just making up a bite to eat here. I just have some English muffins I'm gonna toast, and I've got some avocado to put on them, and we're gonna do some eggs with it. And I have some other things I want to look at and think through today, and that is my fall canning list. I actually didn't do a whole lot of summer canning this year. Um, I usually do, but I had done a double year last year of a lot of things, which means that I am not going to do it the following year. Like I did tons of tomato stuff last year um, and that sort of thing. So I didn't need to do that, but I wanna assess my food storage and kind of figure out what else I want to do. I need to make a couple lists today. So maybe we can sit and chat over some coffee later today about those things. And other than that, come along for the ride.
break from today's video to tell you about Lindsay Home. You all know that I have worked with Lindsay Home before. I enjoy their furniture. We as a family enjoy their furniture so, so much. And the last few weeks we have been visiting my parents in Florida and we were able to set up the Rubik Five for them in their home. The Rubik Five has soft linen fabric. It is abrasion resistant with non-pilling and past abrasion tests. It's washable, which is of course so helpful, especially for my mom with grandkids around. We are able to throw things into the washer and wash things up quickly. With natural fibers, this is an eco-friendly fabric. It is non-toxic, breathable, and comfortable. The Rubik 5 has a dog bed option that is velvet and linen for your furry friend. One of the things I appreciate so much about the Lindsay Home modular sofa that we have in our living room is that it is made from a plywood frame. So it's high strength and stability. It's not easily deformed. It's eco-friendly and safe. The sofa legs are solid wood and it is very durable, stable, and sturdy. I'm not kidding. This thing gets a lot of use as well as the Lindsay Home modular sofa we have and we appreciate the fact that it's so sturdy we never have to worry about it getting wobbly or anything like that. One thing that we have noticed in the Lindsay home sofa that we've had for the past year is it has high density foam, so faster rebound, and it, the plush foam enhances the seating comfort. It brings a cloud soft comfort. It is silk floss to add a softer touch and it is triple layered foamed filled. So this thing is going to hold its shape. It's not gonna get saggy and it's going to keep a beautiful form in your living space. The assembly is so simple. You can put it together in 15 minutes. Plus because it's modular, you can move it around to the position that works best for your space. So check out the link in the description box below along with all the information there to check out Lindsay Home if you are looking for a great sofa particularly that fits lots of family and friends and works with your space, I can't recommend Lindsay Home enough. All right, so we were actually gone a good bit longer than I had originally anticipated today because one of my sweet friends, which I pick up my bread from, she makes sourdough loaves for us. Um, I do make my own, but in some seasons, you just can't do everything, as she so wisely put it today. Um, but I picked up bread from her, and she knew I was gonna be doing a bread pickup today. Texted me this morning and said, hey, why don't you just stay for a cup of coffee? So I did all of that. It was so refreshing and so sweet to just have a nice little coffee date in the middle of our busy day today. And my husband actually also called me and said that he is on his way to pick up our beef. So I'm realizing that when I'm done sharing this with you, I need to make sure we have room in the freezer. But what a beautiful spread from a fall farmer's market. I haven't been to a farmer's market in our area since the fall season has been upon us and it was so fun to see all the colors and all the goodies that come along with the fall season. Our farmer's market actually even has frozen apple cider slushies that you can get. The girls were talking about getting them. We didn't get them today, but we'll probably get them our next visit for sure. So let me chat with you a little bit about what um, I got and why I got it. So I did pick up a shoe fly pie these are something that are really popular in our area and one of my husband's favorite things. I thought he would love to have that with dinner tonight and which will probably be something with ground beef since he is picking up our beef today. And then I got three nice big artesian loaves from my friend. We are so ready to cut into them. They are just so delicious. If you all saw, I did show there was a stand, a flower stand um, that had dried bouquets. I actually picked up one for my friend and gave that to her, but she also had a bunch of live fall bouquets and I stood there really, really debating. I wanted to get a dried one for myself and then I saw these, I thought, you know what? I'll have fun buying a dried bouquet for my friend and then we will put these on our table. They are just beautiful. I love all of the fall colors. 
just absolutely gorgeous. I got some apples. Now these are what they call seconds. They kind of have some little spots on them and stuff, but they work great for as quickly as we've been eating apples in our house. It's something that my daughters have been really into having as a snack or as they're walking out the door, they take one with them, you know, that kind of thing. So it was nice to have a discounted price on apples just because they have a few little minor imperfections. And at the flower stand, the woman was so sweet that owns that, I've talked with her before, and she allowed the girls to each pick out a succulent for free, which I thought that was such a sweet and kind gift. So we have this little guy. I don't know all the names to these. I know this is a cousin to aloe vera. I thought that was really cute. And then we have a string of pearls, which is a plant that honestly I haven't had, or if I have, it was years ago. So I thought that would be fun to propagate and um, show the girls how to propagate a plant because that one's really easy. And then this one here, she told me the name of it, but it's a really long name. However, it is still a succulent, even though it kind of looks more like a leafy green type plant. It's so pretty. She said this one's easy to propagate as well. So I thought that was so sweet and nice that she took time to tell the girls about these plants. And then the obvious like elephant in the room is all of these pumpkins. So I'm going to be canning some more um, canned pumpkin. I did last year and I think as far as I know, I filmed how I did it. If yes, I'm almost sure. Um, so I'll leave that video linked below for you guys. And I'm gonna be cutting into all of these. Now the pumpkins I used last year were Cinderella pumpkins and they weren't quite as bright orange like the the blended puree was not quite as bright orange. So I talked to the one lady there at market and she said that because these are considered like a pie pumpkin, um, that you, these will have a very orange puree. So that's what I'm hoping for. I'm not sure when I'll get to these. These could sit around until January in my cellar and they would be fine. So some point in the next couple months, if not in the next few weeks, I will be cutting these up, roasting them in the oven and then I will be taking the insides out, blending it up and canning it. It's a very, if you are unfamiliar with the idea of canning pumpkin, a lot of people say you can't do it. Um, I come from a Mennonite background. We've been doing it forever um, and we eat it all the time. Um, so there's some controversy there over that, but we do it, I, would, I will say this much, the puree and the whole way you can it is very similar to applesauce other than applesauce has a higher sugar content so you definitely need to pressure can the pumpkin puree um, but the consistency is very much some down the line of applesauce i did also stop at another stand that market had um, and picked up this t-shirt. I thought it was just so cute. I thought it would be really cute under a fun fall cart cardigan, but it just says, this mama prays. And it's 100% cotton. It's like a really comfortable t-shirt. Super cute, a fun little find on my market day for sure. So now I think I'm going to get all of this cleaned up for my husband to come home with all of the beef. And I have another project that's been on my to-do list that I've got to get done. And that is a jar of garlic honey. I will tell you, show you what I'm talking about once I get all of this put away. All right, we got the beef put in to the freezer and I got some stuff put away and then I had one of my daughters come and help me peel up the garlic for this um, and it went a whole lot faster with her helping me. So what we did is we, I have a, a pint, I almost said quart, a pint sized jar here and we fill it about halfway with garlic cloves. And you could also do this in any size jar. You could also do more garlic cloves or less. It's not really like needs to be a certain amount. And then you're gonna take some raw honey and you're going to pour it over the garlic cloves. And one thing that's really important, and I forgot to say this, these are going to end up fermenting in the honey, the garlic cloves. And you can eat the cloves helps a lot during cold and flu season, helps your immune system out and that sort of thing. And you can also use the honey and eat the honey um, if you have a cough as sort of a natural cough syrup type um, of a thing to help out your throat. And another thing that is really, really good 
with this honey is actually to use it in marinade and make like a garlic honey chicken with it. So, so good. So you can use it in cooking too. It's not that it just has to be for cold and flu purposes, um, but it's one of those things that in the fall I try to make. And one thing that's super important, and this is the most important step. So if you only hear this <laughs> out of doing this, very, 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 very key to doing this. And if you don't do this, then you might as well throw your batch away because you wanna be careful about bacteria. So I have to go down and get some more honey. But what you're going to do is every day, and this honey is gonna get darker and darker as the garlic ferments in it. So changing color is normal. So you're going to screw on the lid with a seal and you're going to turn the jar a couple of times in the morning and the evening. And then when you're done doing that, you actually want to unscrew the lid and just allow for some air to come in and out because you are fermenting this. The reason you need to do this is because you don't want bacteria to form and these garlic cloves are gonna to try to float to the top. So you wanna make sure morning and evening that you're recovering them with honey and that everything is getting nice and stirred. Once the honey has turned a nice golden color, which doesn't take too long, you're probably looking at about a week to two weeks, um, you can take out the garlic if you want to or you can just simply store it in the refrigerator. So this whole process is going to happen on your countertop and you can look up recipes. In fact, I'll find a good one on Pinterest to leave below that is step-by-step -step on how to do this. So now we're gonna head upstairs. I've been working on some home organization in our playroom slash homeschool room area. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of what I've done and we have another project that we're gonna tackle. All right, so for those of you that have been around for a while, you remember what this room looked like as a playroom. Well, we've transformed it into a bit more of a playroom slash schoolroom. We live in an old farmhouse that is very small, doesn't have a ton of space, and we just needed some more room and more organization for this school year. You're kind of catching me mid-project, but I'm just sharing you with you progress. Maybe once I make a bit more progress, I can show you. So this here had a mirror on it. That's what those are from and they need to be patched up and all of that. And then this is our memory verse that the girls are writing down in the morning. So I just have it uh, put up there. But I think I'm gonna do something more with this wall. I don't know quite what yet. And every time I show this table, everybody wants to know all the details on it. It folds up. There's two wings on either side. They both fold down and you can just put it away. It is solid wood and these stools all stack on top of each other so we can just tuck all that against this wall and they have this entire space to play in if they want to and it has storage in it. It is from Ikea. They do have a white one as well. You'll have to check if it's in stock. It's a very popular item from Ikea um, if you have an Ikea accessible to you. I love the storage that is in here. We are using it for like paint, scissors, glue, markers, those sorts of things. And they're really big, deep drawers. I don't know if you can see how deep they actually are, but they're very large drawers, which I really, really love. So there's three on this side, and then there's also three on this side. And we have an entire shelf system over here. I'm so, so thrilled with this. This has just had to happen. You all know we had our whole library in the couch for a while because we had some shelves in the one sort of large walk-in closet that we had downstairs. And then we dismantled that, made it into a small office for my husband and I. And now we are having shelves again reappear in our life because I just need it especially now that the girls are in first second and third grade they are reading like fire and I'm a reader as well so being able to have all of our things at our fingertips 
especially because I'm someone that loves to reference books a lot, like especially some of these. This is like gardening books, herbal books, um, just more informational type books that I like to grab when I'm trying to remember something or whatnot. And it's just really hard when they're not on a bookshelf. Is this exactly how I'm gonna have it all laid out? Probably not. This plant I just kind of threw up here. It actually needs to be turned and like the vines need to be tucked in a little bit nicer. But again, I'm in the progress of this and this has come very, very far in the last couple of days. I'm super happy with it. Over here, my daughter has a little pile because we actually have a fold out desk that is getting delivered that's gonna go over here. So things are being collapsible. You all know I've lived in a lot of different size homes. I've even lived in a tiny, tiny home at one period of my life. So having things that fold or transform are excellent. We have a toy bin over here and a trash can because we do lots and lots of crafting and lots and lots of projects. So having a trash can is important. I'd like to find something different for the toy box, but that's what we've got going on. That's just real life for you. This is a shelf leaning here that needs to be cut to the correct size. I had to get an extra shelf and it's actually gonna go right above the, this little house and barn here and we're gonna put paper in it. So I have this paper here, but the girls have a little CD player that'll probably sit in there and we'll move the paper on that kind of narrow, thin shelf. Up here is our school books. Um, this is where I keep a lot of our curriculum and things like that that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Here we've got more just like craft stuff and the girls' CDs for their CD player and that kind of thing. They have some tote bags back here. I'm not gonna break down everything in our library, but I have a nice collection of novels and fiction that I really enjoy. Um, and most of this is by category. And then my uh, fiction books are by writer mostly. And I've got lots of cookbooks in here. I think this is honestly going to be a great planning space for myself too. Whenever I'm doing meal planning and stuff like that, I feel like I'm gonna enjoy just sort of having a library. Um, so down here, we have just some current activities. The girls are really into gem painting right now, so they've got little kits going on down here, shrinky dinks, other little things that are right at their fingertips, and then just other things that we grab and use during school time. We've got some biblical base learning things, um, study helpers down here, we have some other just like random knowledge, general knowledge type books. The girls have lots of their type of books, including things like The Little House in the Prairie. We have a little section of like more classics, Little Women, Little Men, Huckleberry Finn, um, just things like that, Tom Sawyer. Up here, and this is why I need to move this vine, but up here we have all like more history related books. Um, and then this is all science. I love science and so do the girls. They love learning about things. These here are more just like fiction series that are their age group to be reading. And we have a bunch of picture books down here and lots of little gaps to fill in as I find books either used or new um, from local bookshops. We just love book shopping for sure. So I am really, really thrilled with how this all looks and it really has opened up this room. If you all remember, we had some cube shelves over on this wall. They stuck out pretty far, so it really cut off the walkway of coming in there. Over here was sort of a desk that was L-shaped and they had some tack boards back there and another shelf with plants on it. And that table also stuck out really far. And then coming over here, we had other little shelves and things. And so we just really opened this room up and I'm gonna back up actually over here so that you can see a bit better. So now when this is folded up over against this wall, they have the entire room. It's sort of an awkward room to film, but they have the entire room uh, worth a floor pretty much to play on and to get things out. We also still have our Legos, but they are in storage bins underneath of the girls' triple bunk bed. So there's a little update on this 
room and maybe it gave you a bit of organization inspiration, particularly if you have books or learning tools that you're trying to figure out what to do with. <laughs> I hope that this gave you a little motivation to get things organized and cleaned up. All right, so I saw this really cute inspiration pic on Pinterest of doing felt pies, sort of either creating them as a pillow or there's just different things you can do with it. But I thought about the idea of making it more of an interactive toy or something that, an activity that my daughters could do. Now, my daughters are old enough to help me create this fun thing for them to play with. But if your kids are smaller, you wanna make this for your toddlers because it's something that toddlers could definitely do as like a sensory thing, it would be perfect. Um, but you may need to do the creation. So instead of explaining it and then doing it, I'm just gonna explain it to my daughters and you can watch us put them together and maybe find a fun little inspo out of this. I really think that this is a great time of year to do it. It is of course getting closer to Thanksgiving, but also just in the fall is whenever we start making a lot of good baked goods like pies and things like that. Um, even here on my channel, I find myself filming more baked recipes as the colder weather creeps in and that type of thing. So we're gonna do a little bit of baking, but it's not gonna be real food today. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to make a pie pan. So obviously these plastic things don't look like pie pans, right? Yeah. So let's find a way to make them look like pie pans. So you're gonna flip them over on your mat and we're actually gonna put aluminum foil on them. But first you need a thing to spread the glue around. Okay. okay. Whoops. Can I get a big puppy one? Sure. Here, go up. Okay, so I'm gonna use some tacky glue and we're going to, I'm gonna put a blob on the top and see, you're gonna to need to smear it quick because it's glue, it's not paint, okay? So see if you can smear it on pretty good, pretty fast, all the way around to the bottom, like edges. You wanna make sure you get it all over, okay? Smear it, yep, all the way around. Do you need a little more, Kai? Yeah. Hurry up or your, your, blob, your blobby thing, your foam thing's gonna start sticking to it. Okay, now I'm gonna get you guys some pieces of... I need more. You need more? Mm -hmm. Okay, well you're gonna need to hurry. Turn it, turn it, turn it. Here. I need more. Need some more? You guys are doing great, here. And we can add more glue too if you need to, but here. See if you can smear it around the side, see if you can get it all the way. It doesn't even have to be super thick. Just take pieces and you're gonna wanna work quickly because the tacky glue, yep. Kind of mold it onto your thing. We're just making it look like we're making it look like a baking pan. All right, pull off the ones you have on there then. If you think a whole big piece will work better. And then if there's extra, should I lay it on there, Kai? Yeah. And then if there's, then take your hands. Okay, run and wash them. Take your hands and smooth it out over. And then if there's extra, we can trim it off around the edges. Okay, now, now flip it over. Now flip it over and work your way around the edge. So we need glue. No, not really. And then if you want to fold it around. Is that in it? Uh-huh. It's gonna make a great pie pan. Yeah, look at those, they look great. So we are going to make three different kinds of pies. We're going to make an apple pie, a pumpkin pie, and a blueberry pie. Let's do a so you apple need to pie. you need to agree on which pie you're gonna do. Abby says she wants to do apple. I want to do blueberry. You'll do blueberry, and Hazy, you'll do the pumpkin. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the first thing that we have to do is make our crust. So to do that, I'm gonna help you guys draw the lines you're gonna need. You're gonna need some scissors. Here you go. So to make our um, to make our crust, what's the crust on a pie? It's like crunchy. It's kind of crispy. Brown. Where is it usually at? 
On the sides. On the sides and where else? Underneath. On the bottom, yep, underneath, yep. So we're gonna measure yeah, our crust. Right. All right, so we're gonna take a marker to trace around our pie. Now, if we just, yeah. if I trace it right around there, what would happen if we put that crust in? You know? No. It would go down into the thing. But we want the crust to come up the sides, right? So we want to make it big. Yep, that's right. You want to make it just a little bit bigger than, than the bowl. Yep, so it flaps down into the, into yeah. your sides, yep. So it's not a perfect circle, but that works. Okay, so there you go, Kylea. Start cutting your crust. Thank you. Mm-hmm. My turn. Yep. Yep, give it a, give it a try in your pan. Yep. And this is where we can trim it down if we need to. Yeah, I would say that's good. That looks like the inside. Mm-hmm. See if you can find blue, and just to fill it up, do blue and white pom-poms out of here. And then we will make a cut. We will make a covering Can I use one? to cover it. Yeah. <laughs> Fill it on up. Cause that's actually what I'm gonna do with Hazley's too. I have this pack of orange for the pumpkin pie. See Hazley? Mm -hmm. Wait, am so, I the bright orange too? Yeah. Everything in this pack you're gonna put inside your pie. Everything? Mm-hmm. To fill it up. All of it? Yep. Yay! Okay. All right, Eddie. So what I'm going to do is we're going to use this off-white felt mm -hmm. to make your apple slices. So uh, you can either, do you want to trace something or you want to freehand them? Mm -hmm. Well, if you trace, you could trace something to make your apple slices or you could freehand. I think you're good enough to, to freehand it if you want yeah. to. So watch, I'll show you. So you just take the red go. and you're going to go like this to make an apple slice. And then you're going to take your scissors. Mommy, too. And then you're going to cut like that and then cut it out. Mm -hmm. And that'll be your apple slice. Does that make sense? Yep. So maybe what you ought to do is go through and draw your slices first mm -hmm. and then cut them out. There, does that look like an apple slice? Mm -hmm. Okay, I got two sheets of this because I thought we probably would need to, to fill it up to really make it look like it's apples, you probably need a good amount in there. So you'll, you'll probably Mommy, wanna work on that. Okay, good job, Hazley. Now, we're gonna work on the top. A lattice top means ones that cross, crisscross. Oh, I want a lattice top. Yeah, yours will have it and Evie's will have it. But pumpkin pies usually get whipped cream. So we're gonna see if we can make some whipped cream. How does that sound? Okay, we're gonna top them with this. Okay, what? so. Yeah, for the blueberries. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do a. Blueberry dough. Blueberry dough. No, it's just going to make it look more blue underneath of your lattice. Okay, so we're gonna take this. Oh, that's this is not the top. Right now we're gonna trace really close this time, right? Yeah. Because we want to top it off with this thing. There, can you see it? Good enough. Kinda. Okay. We cut out, yeah, I'm gonna see if I can get two. Yep, I can. Okay, so we're gonna actually cut two more circles out of this. You have lots of extra strips to choose from to make the lattice top of your pie. Okay. We're gonna cut these into strips and I need them to be pretty even, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut them. Okay. All right. I'm gonna try to make sure that they are right around the same size so we can weave them together. So we'll get to your whipped cream here in a second, but let's put together the lattice for this. So Kai, why don't you go ahead and build your pie? Sure, if you want to, or you could put it in like you're rolling out the crust and then putting it in, but it's up to you. Okay, all right, so put your, you're rolling out your crust? Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna put all my filling in. Yep. Your blueberry filling. Okay, put this on top. Now, I'm gonna show you how to make a lattice top, and this is actually what you do with dough, like if you're going to make a pie. So you would take, and you would roll your dough out, and you would cut strips of dough. Can I roll my dough? You can play it whenever we're done making these, okay? 
All right, so kind of check out what we've got here. Let's take our strips and lay them across. Are we gonna like sew it? No, no, you're gonna, it's gonna just be sitting on here so that you can use it again yeah. as a toy. So what can I do this? Can I sit on it? Hang on, hang on. So you could just set them on here. Do you see? Um, like that and then go across. Yeah, and then have some going across. But if you want to really make a, whoop, that's not quite long enough here. That's why I cut a couple different ones. If you want to really make it like a real pie, you need to weave them. Should I show you? Yeah. Okay, so let's take these all off. All right, let's start with the middle one. Whoop, it's like this. Mm -hmm. Now, you're gonna take the middle one, you're gonna lift it up like that, and like that. See how it looks woven? Yes. Yeah, okay. Now over here, we're gonna do the same thing, but this time, what are we gonna do? Lift these ones up. We're not gonna do it exactly like that one. You see that? Uh -huh. Now look, is it starting to look like a real woven pie? Yeah! Isn't that cool? So oh, fun! Yeah, so cool. yeah, so much fun, huh? Here. So you'll lift this one up. Wow. And then, so this is why we cut a round, a uh, round purple, I mean blue piece. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, you got the exact idea. Good job. Does it look like a real pie? Yeah. Okay, I have one suggestion. We will, we will put this back on here, but I think this, that this piece needs to be a little bit smaller. So let's make it just a tiny bit smaller. Um, Dang, are you showing the video your pie, Haley? Uh -huh. My pie. All right, here, ready? Okay. There, much better. Yeah. See how it fits right in there? Okay, so go ahead, you work on weaving this, and I'm gonna make the whipped cream for Haley's pie. Okay, you're gonna watch me improvise here and try to make a felt whipped cream blob. <laughs> I cut these pieces out hoping that they're gonna go into a peak and I think I'm going to sort of trying to decide the best way to do this. I want them to sort of go like that so I think I'm going to put some hot glue and also attempt to do this without burning my fingers. I've burnt my fingers so many times on hot glue guns through the years. Oh yes, it is sticking together really nice. Okay. Let's see if we can accomplish this. And it still sort of resembles whipped cream. And this is going to be a bit of an exaggerated blob of whipped cream, I think. Our finished product with the pies I think they turned out great do you guys want to kind of like turn them on the side so they can see like how the sides of them look too they're so cute and then inside of these as they're pretending to bake these pies and they can put them together again they have the filling right you want to show your filling Evie on the inside of yours she's got her apples you did such a good job with those and then we have the filling inside the pumpkin pie are you guys going to be playing with these a lot yeah. in the next couple days? What are you going to play? I want to play that I'm selling them at the market. I want to play like That you're selling them bakery. at the market? I want to play bakery. That's such a good idea. I just love them. And of course we could do all other kinds of flavors, yeah. couldn't we? <laughs> Make them really fun.
All right, friends, so it is the next day and I actually opened up our cellar door over here because it's just a couple degrees colder outside than it is in here. And um, we just really are cooling down here in Pennsylvania, which is great. I think tonight we're gonna have one of our first real frosts. Um, I know my neighbor came over and was talking with me and saying how she was pulling every last thing out of her garden just to prepare for that. So as we are ending the summer season and like I mentioned I didn't do a lot of canning over the summer and we're rolling into the fall season and we're rolling into winter after fall I'm really thinking about my food storage thinking about what else I want to do this year what I would like to do through these what I would consider slower seasons to some degree and there's actually so many projects that can be done sorry I think I have a hair on my face um there's so many projects that can be done in the fall and winter seasons i grabbed a notebook because i'm gonna jot down a list and kind of think through this stuff with you guys there is so so much planning that goes into running a home a house and also here with my youtube channel there's a lot of planning that goes into what i film and those sorts of things and i often don't bring you along on a lot of the planning portion but i thought i would just kind of treat you like a friend or one of my sister-in-laws standing here telling you my thoughts as i think them <laughs> and sort of what i want to come up with for my list of what I want to make. So I actually have a bag. You probably can't see it on this shot, but I have a, I would say a little more than half of a bag, a 50 pound bag of potatoes over here. They are getting on their like kind of not last leg, but should be used up. And I kind of over figured because we actually spent 15 days this past month in Florida with my parents and being down there. So when I purchased this, oh, I don't even know how long ago now, I purchased it thinking we would use it up but didn't really calculate the fact that we were gonna be gone for so long um, in, to Florida. So I think I'm gonna add on here that I want to can those up. I'm going to, and um, I will do my best. I have a list of videos that have a lot of my canning projects. Um, and then what video it goes with. So I will leave that in the description of this video. Also, if this is the first time you're in my cellar, seeing some of my food storage um, and everything we have here, I actually have videos and I do regular videos on kind of touring this space and what all projects I'm working on. So if you wanna go on my channel and go back, you can definitely find those videos. I'm not going to break into it today. We don't have time today. We have lots of other things to get done today um, on my to-do list. So um, I'm going to can up the potatoes that I have. And I actually have a pretty, let's see, where is the potatoes? Um, here, here we got some potatoes. I don't know if you can see them in the shot or not, but I have a pretty nice stash of them. So it's not necessarily to restock, but more so just to um, not let these potatoes go to waste. So I'm going to put the potatoes on here and we use those. We just dump them in the skillet with butter, fry them up as a nice little side. They also work great for potato salad. Do not work good for mashed potatoes. And if you're hearing a lot of sounds, the door is open and we've got funny machines in the, the cellar here running and this old refrigerator that's right next to <laughs> where you guys are um, is really loud. All right, so let's kind of go shelf by shelf. I just saw the bag of potatoes there, so that made me think of it. Um, so we've got peaches and pears that I did last year. We're totally good on those. Um, and they anything canned in sugar lasts it can last a couple of years. You're just going to tend to lose texture. So if my pears from last year are like not the greatest when we open them, I just may ma mash them up and make a pear sauce out of them, uh, which is really easy to do. This is all tomato products. So obviously we're not gonna be doing tomato products in the fall and winter. And then we got jams and jellies and that sort of thing. Now that I have applesauce down here again, I think it's out of the shot but I have plenty of applesauce um, from other years that I do not need for this year. But one thing that we did run out of is a berry sauce that I make and my daughters have highly requested I make it again. And essentially it's 
just an applesauce that I take all of my frozen berries that are left over from the year before and I dump them into the applesauce and blend it all together. So you know those pouches you get in the grocery store? They have like blueberries in it or something like that, but if you read on the ingredients, usually the first ingredient is applesauce. So essentially, yes, there might be carrots and other things mixed into that puree that you're eating, but the base of it is applesauce. So I can get apples well into December from one of my local farms up the road. So I'm going to be um, making a berry sauce and I've got a lot of frozen berries. So, and I just can that the same way I do applesauce. So if you know how to do applesauce, think about flavoring your applesauce. You can get lots of different flavor combinations. So we're going to go with that. And actually some of my um, frozen berries are from Costco that I bought in the last year and I just need to get used up. Okay, so down on this side, we've got pickles, we've got jams and jellies, we've got grape juice. Um, grape juice, I actually missed out on a little bit. Not that we needed it. We have a, a fine stash from last year um, because d while I was in Florida is when our grape order comes in for our area, the one that I'm a part of. And so I missed out on picking up any new grapes for that but there is something else that we have learned to love and that is some cranberry juice so i'm going to put that on my list especially during um cold season because that is something that's very high in vitamin c and works out well okay i thought i would change uh, angles here of this shelf so that you can see as I walk through and a little bit further. So down on this side, I've got broths and chicken. And chicken is actually something I want to put on my list. Broths and chicken are so great to make during the cold season um, because you can have them in your crock pot. If you have slower days, they're just easy to put in you know, the night before, wake up in the morning, shred the chicken, drain the broth, can the chicken, shredded, um, and then can the broth as well. So I'm going to put on here chicken, um, both shredded and the broth. Now I have a huge abundance of beef broth from last year and that is something I don't use nearly as much as chicken broth. So I don't need to add that to my list. Um, but something else I'm seeing over here is some sweet potato. That was something I tried last year for the first time and I really want to do more of that. It is a little on the mushy side, so remember that whenever you have it, but it's still so convenient for lunch. I can drain it off, I can stick it on a plate, heat it up and just put some butter on it and it's like ready to go. I don't have to wait through the process of baking a sweet potato or boiling sweet potatoes. So I want to do more sweet potatoes. Oh yes, and we can also immediately add the pumpkin puree because you all saw me get those yesterday. And since we're on that kick, I was recently at a local shop and saw some pumpkin um, butter and I wanna try doing that too. We love pumpkin in our house and I think having some pumpkin butter and even to make pumpkin butter lattes, I've seen that before, I think that would be so yummy. Now, one other thing, I have a few down um, on the bottom, down towards the end, and that is chickpeas or gar garbanzo beans is another thing, and that is so awesome to make hummus with very quickly when they are canned up like that. So I wanna do some more chickpeas, and I want to really expand my um, beans that I have on the shelf. I have a lot of dried beans, but I, it's just so much more convenient to have beans made up, and they're very, very simple to can. That's something I could probably show in a video very soon. Um, so I'm going to put black beans on here and pinto beans. So we got chickpeas, black beans, and pinto beans. Uh, let's see, even some of the great northern beans I think would be really great. We use those a lot for baked beans or barbecue beans. Um, and I also actually need to make more barbecue beans too. We're actually almost out of those. They're back here, but I think I have four or five jars left of those. So beans, beans, and more beans. And obviously these are something 
because they're made from dried beans. These are all things you could work on at any time of the year, but because we don't have things like tomatoes and stuff in the fall and winter time, they're just great projects for those times of year. This is not a canning project, but something I need to add to my list, and that is to get a hold of my honey farmer. I don't know, is that what they're called? I bet there's a more technical term for that. <laughs> but my far the guy, the orchard I get my honey from, um, because I want to get another five gallon bucket. We probably have, oh, uh, I'd say less than half of that for sure um, here on the shelf because I just put it into quart jars, screw the lid on and you are good to go. You don't have to can it and I want the honey to stay in its raw form. And if you have any question on how long honey can last, for those of you that don't know, they actually found honey, crystallized honey, in jars in the pyramids. So honey is pretty much um, everlasting. It's something that has its own built-in component of being preserved, its own natural preservative, so you really don't have to do anything to it. Um, and I don't like to heat it. I like to keep it in its raw form. Um, so I just put it in jars and screw the lid on and we're good to go. It stays nice for us. So I just need to write on here to get a hold of him so I don't forget. Oh yes, now I'm remembering something else. I want to do some carrots. I tried doing baby carrots and they are not our favorite. But I do want to do up some carrot coins and then a couple smaller jars, probably pint jars. Um, of really small cut carrots so I can dump those into soups um, but don't recommend canning baby carrots they just don't have the freshest taste and most of them are actually bleached whenever they're processed so that's not good for us either it just helps them last longer in the bag it's definitely a whole lot better to actually cut up your own carrots for sure. <laughs> my goal today was just simply to think through a lot of my canned goods. I will keep this on my desk as I think of some more things now that I've kind of looked over my shelf. And then on this side, I have a lot of dry goods and um, extracts and seasonings and things like that, herbs and such. And some of this stuff, I do need to get another Azure order placed sometime soon. That's for another day for me to think through. Um, I have a lot on my plate today, but this is giving me a lot of excitement, a lot of thought on what else I want to can. I'm actually going to go down here and look at my meats. So we've got some beef and I will take a roast sometimes. I don't know if you can see me very well from there. Probably. Um, I will take a roast sometimes and cut that into chunks and we call that chunk meat or steaks um, if we wanna get them out of the freezer. And then I just can them up like this and they're basically little, like little bites of roast beef. They're so good over some rice. There's many, many uses you can make beef stew out of that too. I did a lot of green beans this year, which was good. And here's my canned shredded chicken. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I wanna do in here. I might put on here, just because we haven't had it for a while, and it's something we do use a lot, and that is ground pork or sausage. Um, that is so convenient to have on the shelf because we get it out and I throw it in the skillet. Obviously, it's already cooked, and I'll add a little bit of barbecue sauce to it, and we eat it on top of baked potatoes, like a loaded baked potato, um, and it's just super a super fast meal when you eat it really quick and I've been out of that on my shelf for a while. So I think that's everything I'm gonna add for today. I need to kind of hop along, but thanks so much for hanging out with me today. And I've been so enjoying the style of videos I've been doing and just so enjoying, um, just kind of filming life as it comes and a little less structured as I used to. And you all have seen some shift in my content, I know. Um, but I'm glad you're here for it. I'm glad for the feedback. So many of you have commented and said how much you love the style videos that I've been doing. And it's so fun to really embrace the seasons that we're in. I love the seasons. I love the fall, winter, spring, summer. Winter is my least favorite. <laughs> but I love how the seasons change and then celebrating that in my videos, getting clips and pieces of what that season brings. And when you're somebody that does 
a lot of preservation or gardening or cooking, you know, you're, you're involved in family events and things like that, you really think about the seasons and how they affect those things going on in our lives. And so I think that planning out what I'm going to preserve or projects I'm going to work on for each season is so fun. And I'm going to probably go on Pinterest. I have a board on there of canning recipes that I've seen from other people. Kind of scroll through that, see if there's anything in there that I want to do. Um, and probably be able to find a pumpkin butter recipe in there too. I think I've saved one. But it's just, it's just really fun. And it's been fun to, to break out and enjoy filming all different things, all different aspects of life. And I want to continue doing that and we've been doing really well. One thing I did want to update because today, um, you guys, or till this video goes up, you will have known that there was a very large hurricane that hit Florida and it's where my parents are um, and on the Gulf Coast. And a lot of you were already contacting me wanting to know how they're doing. They are doing fine. The area that they live in actually did not get hit as badly as they first anticipated. So they are doing very, very well. And I just wanted to pass that along and thank you for all the prayers and support um, through that. Obviously being their kids here, I have three brothers and all of us have families here. You know, we were very nervous to be thinking about our parents, you know, in another state very far away under such um, potential harm. And so, we were just glad that they had a safe place to go. They were in a sh uh, sheltered building. They had to leave their home and um, yeah. So I'm just, I'm so thankful that, that they are okay. And my heart goes out to many people that are not okay um, from the hurricanes that have been coming through and all of that. So, um, but I wanted to give that quick little update. And other than that, we have been digging into school and been doing really well and like I said embracing the season so if you're new here definitely hit that subscribe button I'm so glad you joined me today and check out the links and any info you might be looking for in the description box below leave me comments I love reading your comments and chatting with you all in the comment section and I'll see you guys in my next video